Good Thursday morning, everyone. What I've got around my neck is a homemade, funky, lawn-style... Let's see if I can do this in such a way as to not... I've got my Directed by David Lynch t-shirt on today because... Well, there's method to my madness this morning, I think. Yesterday I had the good, uh, great pleasure to be on my friend uh, Patricia Baker's uh, blog talk radio uh, show, Supernatural Girls. Okay, uh, Patricia and I have uh, been friends from way back, and uh, uh, she was the uh, the producer, if if you will, uh, to a number of uh, video uh, projects and television video projects, and uh, she was uh, responsible for getting the text of uh, the von Velling's. Uh, classic, classic work in German of the uh, Opus Kabbalisticum Magicum Hermeticum, <laughs> whatever. The, one of the most famous and influential texts, magical texts, alchemical texts, that was written in uh, uh, German. Uh, a textbook for the Gold und Rosenkreuzens, or however you pronounce that, and uh, the, the inspiration of Goethe's uh, uh, Dr. Faustus. Uh, that's the book that he was looking at. Never been translated into English. Patricia was uh, uh, responsible for bringing that over and uh, having it uh, translated by the, well, anyway, it was a project that I was in, involved in. I went to the uh, British Museum to do, or British Library to do uh, uh, research on it and everything. But anyway, she's got this wonderful blog talk show called Supernatural Girls. And uh, I was on it yesterday, and we were talking about Goetia, okay, and, uh, and demons. And uh, it's for a broader audience. Uh, the I know who I'm talking to right now are, are probably much more esoterically inclined. Uh, but anyway, I enjoy, you know, talking about this stuff to a broader audience too. But anyway, the, the idea of the director, okay, I use the the analogy that a Goetic magician is uh, uh, similar to the great uh, controlling uh, entity of, of a movie project. Like uh, when uh, uh, somebody wins an Academy Award, they always get up and say, oh, I want to thank the makeup person and I want to thank the, the, the crew and the, and the architects and I want to thank my mother and my father and the, my school teacher and my, okay. They thank all these little people, okay, that help make this, this uh, uh, honor uh, possible. Those little people aren't really little people. They're the ones that do the heavy lifting uh, for that movie project, okay? And those same people, those abs those same little people, if they weren't under the control, the masterful control of the of the of David Lynch, they could just as easily torpedo that project and just made the life a living hell and made the whole pro uh, uh, project a failure and uh, that person wouldn't be up there winning the Academy Award. So I use that analogy. And uh, so we, we just talked the whole 90 minutes, just me rambling on about uh, uh, Goetia and things like that. And... Uh, I was racking my brain because I wanted to uh, use uh, uh, something that I had already uh, written to somebody that had, 
had uh, written me asking me, uh, why is it that so many Goetian magicians go crazy? <laughs> and it's true, <laughs> okay? And it's, and it's not because the, uh, that kind of magic is inherently uh, dangerous because uh, it isn't. It's the it's the individual who's dangerous. So anyway, I I dug it up. I remembered where I found it, and it was in uh, uh, my book Ask Babylon, one of the best books I ever compiled that nobody's read ever. Uh, well, I take that back. I'm sure many of you have. Uh, I'm trying to see what year. It's relatively new. Yeah, it's uh, 11 years old, 2011, by my good friends at New Falcon Publications. Anyway, it's a cute book. It's got my drawings in it and funny little things. Okay, but this one, I babbled on because I, I want to read the guy's letter too, because it's a great letter. So, hello, Babala. We met briefly several years ago during a lecture you gave on tarot, uh, which included some handouts on Goetic affiliations with the tarot. While you volunteered your time to answer questions after the lecture and even included in an open-ended offer to try to respond to questions occurring later, after one had digested your material, I found that I had to do quite a bit of research and steep for a while. Thus, my questions have to do with safety and effectiveness of Goetic evocation. I note that it's been well documented by your own comments in your book, Angels, Demons, and Gods of the New Millennium, that lots of evokers tend to develop a predilection toward insanity. In the book you mentioned in the last chapter of your assessment of the phenomenon and your considerations of it. This includes an outline of sorts on how to avoid such pitfalls. I move to comment that such a methodology, not micromanaging the demon or, my phrase, becoming intoxicated with the deity energy, authoritative position, is apparently a bit challenging for corporate executives, much less a ceremonialist. I have noted that most folks who dominate the more colorful exchanges on the internet forums, including the author magicians A and B, seem to have evoked more than one critter, and this seems to be a common constituent uh, uh, yeah, constituent of their eventual destabilization. <laughs> I, like, I like the way this guy writes. A common constituent of their eventual destabilization, both of their physical and mental health. I also have to wonder aloud if it isn't the strain of attempting physical manifestation that doesn't contribute heavily to these health problems. I have no real statistical data to corroborate this. I have to write that I've noticed that in your writings, that your writings only specify an evocation of one, Orobas, and per references, I have one of his attributes is that he is not only loyal to the exorcist, he protects the same from temptation by other spirits, presumably even other demons. So I have to ask, have you managed to evoke more than one Ouroboros? More, more than Ouroboros. I've read some of the work of Polk Runyon, and we're going to talk about Polk because I love and highly admire 
and recommend the works of Polk Runyon. I've read some of the work of Polk Runyon, but only concerning his work with one spirit, Visago. Have you had or are you aware of any cooperation with other magicians' documentation of the demon plane and their relative IQ? <laughs> Thank you for your time. Name with help. Okay. Hi, Name with Eld. I'm not familiar with authors, magicians A and B, as we mentioned, or their work, nor do I participate in or follow online discussions on these matters. Well, I am, however, somewhat familiar with the work, theories, and attributes of Polk Runyon and generally find them to be compatible with my field theory. While I'm not an official member of his organization, I know Polk to be, uh, if I dare use the term, sane individual who has succeeded in carving out a rich and balanced life for himself, unencumbered by delusional excesses that often plague those who make magic part of their lives. In other words, Polk has a life a life that is enriched by his magical practices, but not defined by them. This might be because he was fundamentally wise and balanced before he even took up the wand and sword, and this might be the key to your concerns. Your question might have less to do with the number of spirits one calls up and more to do with why one is calling up the spirits in the first place. I know two individuals who systematically called up all 72 Goetia spirits over a period of several months. The last time I looked, they were both certifiably barking mad. One of them, I know for sure, is deceased. But I don't believe they became mad because they evoked all 72 spirits. I believe they were already mad to think they needed to evoke all 72. They were already nuts, and the colorful psychodrama of Solomonic magic just amplified their existing pathologies by the power of 72. I know for a fact that over the years, Polk has evoked many more spirits than Visago. In 1994, I evoked all 72 in a formal ceremony that lasted a little over 12 hours, 36 in the daylight hours and 36 at night, spirits that is, as part of the weekend operation to charge my first deck of tarot of ceremonial magic. That's a story in itself. But once I gave these spirits their charge and embedded them in the cards, I did not otherwise retain them in my stable of familiars. That marathon operation not included, I've evoked fewer than a dozen spirits for individual tasks and currently retain, on, retain only two uh, in an ongoing relationship. As far as cooperation with other magicians on which spirits are safe or not safe, I'm only mildly interested. I believe that because no two magicians are alike, the spirits ultimately behave differently for each magician. Now, and this is something I touched on yesterday. Let's say that the 72 spirits of the Goetia, even if they were just arbitrarily uh, selected by you to represent 72 particular forces, blind forces, 
energies, powers, talents, vices that you have in your menagerie of existence. Now, because you're existing relatively successfully in life, you're keeping a roof over your head, you're, you're keeping your belly full, you're keeping your, your mind uh, 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 occupied, you're, you're living as, as much as you, you feel you could do much better. You're doing pretty damn good compared to uh, 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 most of the world's population. So you've already got many of those 72 powers, forces, vices, talents. You've already got a bunch of them totally under your control. You don't need to be whipping them up. You've already whipped them up. You've already mastered them. Just to successfully suck in breath and and live from moment to moment. But there are some that you don't. You're some that are working against you. There's some that you don't have any control over. They're running amok like burning Drano through your soul just along the lines of least resistance. Those are the ones that the magician needs to trap in a triangle and give new marching orders. Because if they're not working for you, they're working against you. And if you've got problems in life, you may as well use the techniques of, of magic and your own imagination to make the demon the representative, the personage of that problem. The demon can fix your problem because the demon is your problem. I go on. But you sound like a thoughtful and competent person. As long as you proceed with confidence and a healthy sense of humor, I don't see that you have much to fear from this kind of work. But please, remember that when you evoke a Goetic spirit, you are evoking an adventure. Living through that adventure turns you into a different person the type of person who deserves to receive what you ask for from the Spirit. I know this has been too brief, but I hope it has been somewhat helpful. My best, Babylon. Once again, that is from Ask Babylon. That's a painting by Constance. And uh, she did the, the, the cover work for this. And you can see my coffee cup, you can see, see my turban, my turban. It's really a, a cute, there's my, there's my turban right there. Anyway, that's it for today. Ooh, Constance and I are looking forward to popping popcorn and watching the hearings that start at five o'clock our time. So anyway, but until then, we got to go out in that 100 degree uh, heat and do some shopping this morning. But tomorrow, hopefully if all goes well, I'll see you tomorrow. And then till then, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Be the director in your own life. Get your problems under control there. But to first, you got to identify them. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under wealth.